everyone and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask a Drone You coming to you live from CES 2019. We've got the drone section behind me and frankly I've been really excited to see what's new here with drones. As the market matures there are different focuses and priorities in the industry. We were looking and we were hopeful to see Elaine Chow but because of the government shutdown unfortunately she wasn't here. So what are we seeing? What are the trends? Well, we have a lot to go over, but really quick, Unique is showing off a new H520 RTK. I know, RTK, right? Also showing off the new H520 Plus. Autel is here really focusing heavily on their Evo platform, and Splash Drones really had a decent sized booth showcasing their new Spry waterproof drone. Frankly, it's one of those vehicles that you can really utilize in a, a myriad of environments. So what else are we seeing here? Well, we're gonna be looking into 5G infrastructure for cellular-based aircraft. I'm really excited to see how that's going to affect BVLOS operations as well. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Here at CES, DJI released their new smart controller, which integrates the screen into the remote. And frankly, what I like about this remote is the ergonomics of it. Now, this remote only works with the Mavic 2 series, anything that works with OcuSync 2.0. Now, here's the beauty of the remote itself. It's got HDMI out, it's got a micro SD card, that way you can cache footage while you're flying. In addition, USB out, and you'll notice that the antennas fold, and in addition to the antennas folding, the little thumb mounts, well, they come off and store as well. The only thing that I would say that I don't like about this particular remote is that well, it doesn't work with the old Mavic or the older drones. It's supposed to work with the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual in the time, but the other thing is it doesn't have the rechargeable battery like those Ma uh, like those Phantom 2 RT or excuse me, like the Phantom 4 RTK remote which has that removable battery. So looking forward to getting my hands on one of these. I like I said I really like the ergonomics of it. It's actually really nice to kind of hold on to. Supposedly, it's also able to have third-party applications like Pix40, Maps Made Easy, and other things. But without having the opportunity to actually get my hands on one and try it out, I'm not 100% confident in that statement that, well, they'll just work. So once we get our hands on one, we'll let you know more. But let's move on to the next item. The other drone that's really exciting for me is the Auto Robotics Evo, and it's for really a few simple reasons. It's one of the few drones without geofencing. It's one of the few drones being utilized by the Department of Interior, amongst other commercial. Frankly, something that was really exciting about the Evo was the remote and the interface of the application that ran on the remote. You didn't need a phone. I didn't see any way to sign in, but I could be wrong about that. But everything was controlled from the remote. There was no external monitor. Everything was on the remote itself. And frankly, I really like that because it means startup will be faster, it'll be simpler, and overall, I shouldn't have to use the internet to log into it. That's why I'm excited about the Evo. As we were walking by the Unique booth, which is a little bit smaller this year, I noticed that Unique put out a few additions to their H520 platform. Not only do they have a new dual camera that is thermal and EO, a lot like the other solutions you've seen out there, but they're also launching a unique H520 RTK. And with this base station, they're essentially able to, or they're saying that they're able to get centimeter grade corrections. So with that, it'll be really interesting to see the workflow. Which network are they connecting to? How are they getting their network corrections? Lots of questions about the workflow in general for this very particular bird. It's exciting to see more competition for the RTK series on DJI. The question is, is which drone will have the better workflow? The Splash Drone 3 arrives, and in addition to that, the new Spry Drone, which is a waterproof drone, it also has an autonomous feature to flip itself upside down in the water if you're trying to fly out of the water. All right, guys, well, that's a wrap for the show today. There's so much going on here at CES, and frankly, it's almost overwhelming. I really expect to see 
Autel make a big move this year, and I think we may be seeing some new drones from Unique as well, as it may be really important and valuable for Unique to put out a product that can currently compete with the other drones. Simply without a convenient workflow, it's difficult for commercial operators to utilize some of those vehicles. So we're really excited to see what they come out with. In addition to that, all these waterproof drones, they're really awesome. But where is the autonomous features for these drones, right? If we could be mapping coral reefs and utilizing photogrammetry for that. Well, it's a little disappointing, but there are some really cool, neat things that are coming here out of CES. Thanks for joining us, and I'll see you in the next episode. You're listening to another epic episode of Ask Drone News.